Hi, this is Mike Pucciarelli. Tonight, for this presentation, I'll be talking about my still life photography and when I would use the Adobe software to process those beautiful images. I first want to tell about who I am. I started professional photography in 2010. I got an associate degree in 2013. And in 2015, I joined Professional Photographers America. 2017, I joined the Maryland Club, Affiliate Club. In 2020, I joined the Affiliate Club of Pennsylvania. These are some sample images. In tonight, today's presentation, I'm gonna talk about how I process some of these. Maybe I could do all of them as time permits. And these are my light panning images. And this is my, the third one is my white plexiglass image. And the fourth one is my black plexiglass image. Today's agenda, we're gonna talk about three tables, the white, the black, and the regular still life table. And within these three tables, we're gonna talk about how to use some very simple lighting modifiers. And it's very simple stuff you can buy at an art store online. And then we'll talk about camera settings. We're gonna talk about how to use the Adobe software, which I first start in Bridge, and then I'll go to Lightroom, and then I'll go to Adobe Photoshop. And then I'll mostly be talking about, you know, Bridge and Adobe Photoshop. These are the four still life tables. You have the black plexi table, I mean the white plexi table, you have the black plexi table, just a regular still life table, and then another way to use a regular still life table for light painting. And this one over here with the scrim is how it used the, the regular still life table. These are modifiers you can use on any table. This includes a white plexiglass, the black plexiglass. This includes a regular still life, or whether you want to use it for light painting. You know, for any dramatic lighting, you have mirrors, silver reflectors, silver cards, anything soft, you want to use like white, white cards. And then black cards are great for taking out glares. Black cards are great if the strobe's given too much light. If it's bleeding too much light, you definitely wanna use a black card to make the light work better. And in gold cards, you have like a yellowish taint. It's also good for portraits. Then there's plastic fusion scrims, which is basically plastic fusion scrim material on a frame. And that's great for softening the light. And there's colorful gels, and there's ways to mix gels to get a really cool color. And there's medium-sized plexiglass sheets, and that's great for putting in front of a strobe to soften a light. Then the cinephil, it's great for creating like a cheap snoot with maybe some clothespins or duct tape, or even small spring clamps. For natural light, Blinds play an important role in, you know, using natural light. And this is absolutely no, you know, electric light. There's a lot of lights you can use just with like controlling the blinds, like using the blinds to aim the light at a 40 degree angle. And then there's spring clamps and it's both big and small and very valuable. All sizes are great. Spring clamps can be used like to hold things. Then there's C clamps. All sizes are good. And there's ways to use C clamps and also spring clamps for like holding up like a, a fusion background in frames on a black plexiglass table. Then there's duct tape. Duct tape's great. You can create, you know, a lot of stuff with duct tape. You can hold a lot of stuff. You can even use duct tape to create like a slit snoot for like a small lid flashlight. Then there's clothespins. 
clothespins you can buy, you know, at any drugstore. Clothespins are great for holding up gels on the strobe. You can buy a lot of this on an art store. And you can also buy a lot of it at a hardware store or online or even some of this you can buy even at a drugstore like Safeway. This is called the white plexiglass table. You can buy this at, I bought this at Amazon. Um, you could also buy this at BH, but BH sells it with a more expensive frame, like the Manfetta frame. This will really jack up the price, but both frames are good, whether it's Manfrotto or non Manfrotto. And I've used this table since 2015. And in many ways, you use this table. I'm about to demonstrate that next. And you can use a table with one light, two lights, three lights, flash continuous, or even LED. And two things are really important with the still life table. It's angle of camera and position of light. Because at a certain angle and a certain position of light, you get a very beautiful reflection. You can also get like a floating characteristic when you position the light in a certain way for a product. Now, the next set of slides, I'm going to talk about how I could use one light, two lights, three or more, three or more lights. This is how I use one light. It's a very simple light setup. You have a product on a white background. Basically, you just put the lights on top of the object. And there's ways you can use this to make sure you bring out the product label better. You wanna make sure you bring out the product label with this, maybe you could aim it at a 40 degree angles. You could do this in many colors, but I recommend using white or black. You have two lights aiming at a 45 degree angle. This is great for bringing out the edges of a product. And then we have to feather the flash and by looking at the product to get the lighting characteristic you like. It's a great setup for contrast. And you can, you know, you could have, you could use two lights in many ways. I'm gonna go back to the previous slide. You can have a light here, you can have a light here. Then there's a third light you can add, and I'll talk about that next. This is how I started still at photography using the white plexiglass table at Montgomery College. We have a, a light underneath, we have a light in the side, we have a light in the background. And I use flash for all this. I'm just using this to set it up real quick. And there's a way to set up to get out reflections by moving the light close to the edge here and you angle the camera. And there's also ways to have the, the subject appear like a floating motion where you have the light right underneath the subject. So you use a white plexiglass table. It's a matter of positioning the light where you want it to get the certain desired effects. And this is also great for showing off edges. You could also have more light if you need it. You could have light over here. You could have a light on top of like a butterfly style. This is one of the many ways you use three or more lights. If you have any questions about the white plexiglass table, you can email me at mputrelliart 2016 at gmail.com. Next table I want to talk about, it's the black plexiglass table. This table, used by many still life photographers, drives everybody crazy with when you want to take a shot depending how you take it, you may have to deal with like small white dust specks. And later on, 
And the Photoshop demo, there's ways to take care of that. There's also other tools you can use to help with this problem. And this problem, this um, plexiglass table, these are saw horses from Home Depot. This is plywood. This is poles. These are holes drilled into plywood. And this is black cloth over the black plexiglass table. And this is a great setup if you just have maybe, depending what you want to do. If you have a, and I'll talk about this later, but like a watch laying flat, you have a light in the back. And you could use, like I said, in the lighting modifier page, you could use white cards for softer light. You could use anything silver for more dramatic light. And sometimes you just need another light, depending on what you're trying to do. And I'll demonstrate that later. And the ways to use the scrim, either at 45 degrees or 90 degrees, and I'm about to demonstrate that next. This is how to use the black plexiglass table at 45 degrees. The scrim is at a 45 degree angles, and I'll later show the, how to do the light. It's also at a 45 degree angle. And you could use, most times with this setup, I just use one light and maybe a gold card or reflected card to maybe put in more light. And again, like the white plexus table with the black, two things are important. Position of light, I'll talk about that soon. And then the angle of the camera because you wanna to try to get the subject where the light hits it. It's a 45 degree angle. This is at a 45 degree angle. They should be parallel and the light hits the table. And this is a great setup if it's just, just a light that if you want to take a watch, but it makes sure the watch is flat. Tricky thing is you want to make sure the light is aiming at the watch. And this is great for anything small, like a watch ring but you may have to add another light. I'll talk about that like next. Suppose it's for a mug. If I were to use a flash over here, it's parallel to this, the front part would come out dark. But if I have a light over here at a 45 degree angle, then the product label will be better. And I use another light, of course, to bring out the front part. It also depends on you know, what the angle you're using and also the lights. Try to think of what you're photographing when you do a product. And you can use continuous, but most times you use flash with greater effects. This is how I use the black plexus table with the scrim at 90 degrees. And the scrim is at a 90 degrees. And this is great for anything glass. The light is in the back of the scrim and the light will shine through the glass. And then for nine glass subjects, you wanna use another light in front of the subject, either at this 45 degrees or this 45, or you could have two lights here. You could also have like reflectors and mirrors to add lights, like discussed in the lighting modifier slide. All depends on what you're trying to do. This is one way to use the black plexus table. 90 degrees, this is a glass subject because the light will shine right through. And if I'm cutting the vignetting part in half by positioning the light. Non-glass subjects, you need a light added, like if this were like a mug, I'd have a light over here, so you bring out the front part better, or maybe a light over here. It's a matter of positioning a light for this effect, and there's ways you can do that by just moving the light back to make it less harsh.
This is another way to use the black plexus table. The scrim's at 90 degrees. Look at the vignetting difference. I raise the light up because I want to bring more light over here. But then make this more harsh, I can move it back. I'm using a simple floodlight because I'm already using a flash, it'd be a lot more powerful. It was just easy to set up for this presentation. Like I said, you could lessen the power of the light. You could also move it back. You could also aim the light. This is how I use two lights, one over here and one over here. And this is how I use two lights. This is a mug, this is at a 40 degree angle, so it lights up this better, or this, or I could use it over here. Or if we need another light, I could use it over here, right? Make it put this light on top of it. And the scrim is made out of supplies from Plaza Arch, the stretcher frames, the staples, and this plastic fusion is got from BH. If you have any questions about the black plexus table, you can just email me at mputriart2016 at gmail.com. This is the regular still life table. Saw horses, plywood, got the black car, Be brown background board from B8, from Plaza Arts, and the spring clamps, any hardware store. Then I have a scrim if I want to soften light even more. For natural light, it recommends you start with the natural light you have, you have the subject, and you want to aim that natural light at a 40 degree angle. You want to aim the light. You want to shape your light just with natural light. And you use available light and you use the blinds, white cards to control it. This is really a scrim because it was a sunny day. And other ways you use a table too, and I'll discuss that later. And the many ways to use the regular table, you do it just with natural light. And if you want to add light, maybe a flash, maybe lead, continuous. And again, angle of the camera is important. Also, position of the light or just modifying the light with the blinds, controlling the light, depending what light you use. And you could use any lighting modifier from the lighting modifier page from the beginning. Again, you want to work with the blinds, you want to angle your light. You want to use a 45 degree angle from the blinds. If the light's too harsh, you know, use a scrim, use two scrims. Use a black card to take out glares. And this is how another way to use the regular still life table, it's a light painting. Where, and I'll talk about the filters and flashlights where you light paint through a scrim reflector, or a white scrim. And I recommend with the big light or a power flashlight, you light paint through a white reflector scrim and make sure you have a very dark light background the light paints. Make sure that the lead light, the light here, the angle is going 45 degree angles. You want to aim the light subject, you want to go back and forth. And you add light in a dark environment, like indoors, I'd recommend using a LED flashlight between 80 and 120 lumens. This is great for anything small. 
Large the lumens flashlights. I recommend filters or scrims to control the lights. Filters play an important part when I light paint inside because they help soften the light, they help you light paint better, and they work with any reasonable size LED flashlight. You definitely want to use to soften the light so you have a good image to work with, a good painted image to work with, with LED light. And the ways you use duct tape, if you want a small slit snoot with a small LED flashlight, you want to just light paint a very small part of an object. Are there any questions on the light painting table, regular still life lighting paint table, is emailing me at ampoutrelayart2016 at gmail.com. These are what my LED flashlights look like. This is a 50 lumens. This is 80, 120. Bigger the flashlight, the bigger the lumens. It's always a good idea to use foil filters. It's just plastic pipes you buy from the hardware store and to put together with duct tape. And I'll talk about that next set of slides. How to purchase these lights either at Home Depot or Market Center. You have plenty on places that sell these, like Amazon or anywhere. And these are what my filters look like. I get a hacksaw, I make a slant, and this is duct tape holding it. Filters really help you control the light, they help you soften the light. You want to use a swinging. You want to make, you know, if it's a complicated object, you want to have, you know, several exposure shots. And the light paint outside is a little different. It's a lot darker. You need more powerful light, like light painting a car. And masking would be easier if you control your light painting with a LED flashlight and a filter. And you definitely want to avoid an overexposed image selection when doing work in Photoshop. You know, it's compositing, masking, painting. These are my LED flashlights. Look with the filters attached. You just put the filter on the flashlight. And depending on what your light paint, you want to go quick, emphasize less light, maybe avoid a glare, maybe paint through a scrim, avoid the glare. You want to emphasize more light by going slower. And you want to think of the direction of light and you want to think you can do two directions, but I like to recommend using one direction to add impact in an easier way. You want to shoot with the full battery you want to make sure all your LED flashlights work. You want to make sure the LED lights are with fresh batteries. And you want to have an extra set of fresh batteries for the camera and the LED flashlights. You want to use a cable these either wired or remotes to hold the camera still because you don't want to use your shutter button because you'll move the camera. That's where I recommend using a cable release. These are my LED lights turned on with the filters on. The lights will look differently and they'll look softer in Photoshop masking. Painting in Photoshop with the mask be easier because you control the light better. And you want to make sure you don't use too much light when you light a part of a subject because they'd be too overexposed. And basically, LED light with the filters. You just improve your light painting. And these are my LED flashlights. Look with no filters attached. It's a big difference when using the filter and not using the filters. I want to stress that when you use a filter, Photoshop masking will be better. And it's probably a lot better to use filters than not to use these filters. 
It's an example of a bigger, more powerful light. You have 216 quality LED lamps. These barn doors could make the light path smaller. And there's a dimmer switch on the back. You can turn it to the lowest setting. It's still a lot of light. There's a, it's run by batteries or by cord. This cord I had to purchase separately. But I, was, I got everything else here. You get tell you have colorful gels, and you have like a clear gel. This is great for softening the light. And the light also has a thing for you can put on your camera with, and this is like a horseshoe to hold up the cam the light. And this is another light where we have over six hundred LED lamps on this. All this came in one package. The bottom thing is the cord you put in the car. This is the cord for the light. This is the snooch knock because this will cover three fourths of the light. You put it on here. And I always use the power cord. It does have a V-mount battery slot, but I never used it because I think that I know that some of the batteries are more expensive than this light. And the lights bounce at 56K. This is what my diagram looks for light painting. It's great for your indoor. This sucks on the left. Aperture 16, bulb mode. All that could do like many seconds exposures. I also 100, I always leave it at. The drive mode is single shooting because I want to take one shot at a time. I do not want to use H++. Auto focus mode, AF focus. It's great when the pair moves slightly. It's great for still life photography. And for metering mode, I like to use a contrast to evaluated mode. In standard picture mode, it's the sharpest mode. You can use portraits, but I recommend the standard picture mode. After a light painting, I like to try to use eight. It's a lot darker. This is what my camera's diagram looks like when I do still life. Use a shutter of 125th. Aperture 16, ISO 100. Sometimes you have to cut the shutter at 1 250th. Standard picture mode is the sharpest, and you have the daylight white balance. And the evaluative contrast mode, similar settings you see in the other still life page of the, this presentation. I like to use an AI focus. I like to use single shooting mode. I like to shoot in RAW. RAW is the most editing capabilities. You just shoot in manual bulb mode. And most times it's just use ISO 100 or 200 with the tripod. Now tripod, I like these ISO 400, ISO 800. It's a white balance diagram. I always like to use the daylight because it's the most natural. Balance at approximately 52K. I never use white balance because this is the least natural. You'd be adding artificial stuff in the photograph. And custom white balance, you can you know use with the white card and you set in the camera, or you can also just adjust, just go to the K here and just adjust the Kelvins. I like to use, you know, daylight white balance, balance at 52K. This is noise reduction diagram. One is automatic. Two, something happens. Even if there are no files, no problems because there's algorithms that's correcting, you know, blue color cast. Today's model and GSRs, they don't have this problem too much, but early 
or early modern DSLRs did when they first came out. The setting is there if you need it. We would now recommend two for fireworks because it take several seconds to get back to the original screen. I met fireworks, I just used one. I also noise reduction. I recommend using two for strong. One's also good too. Have the one or two, but don't have it disable because you want to try to re reduce the noise reduction. I always use two for better noise reduction. This is another camera setting diagram. We talked about the picture style. Color spec, I like to use sRGB. It's great for the web and correcting color casts. You know, some people use RGB or Profoto, but I like to use sRGB. Exposure bracketing, this is great for shooting the same image with different exposures. I like to shoot this in manual mode with it, and sometimes in one stop or two stop differences, where it means that you have regular exposure, one or stop under, one stop over, and the same thing with two stops. So to clean my still left table of Novus, most of the time I just use one. Sometimes I do two then one. I rarely use three, which is for heavy scratches. If you get two, then you gotta finish with one. Just start with three, you gotta go to two then one. These are what my mirrors look like. These are armature crypts that help these mirror plates. It's also a mirror with the folding arms. You have duct tape. These are my C clamps. These are my spring clamps. Talked about how these are used. We talked about clothespins. This is with gels. These are small gels. You buy this at the art store. You have silver cards, gold cards. We have cinefill. We have film, draft paper, effusion. This is great for creating a scrim. Also great for attaching to a strobe to soften the light. This is what my scrims look like. Then you have plexiglass sheets, the white for great for soft light. Black is great for, you know, small still life watches. And these are silk clear, as well as you use these to do food. There's ways you use this with the white backgrounds where it appears like a floating technique. These are my white cards, as well as you do food. Black cards. Those are black cards. These could be um, ways to do food, ways to control the light. Ways to use them, you could put it, take out the products and glares by putting it in the strobe and trying to take out the glare. Now it's time for the software presentation. We're going to start with Bridge. First, going to go to um, light painting.
These are all the solo separate parts. And what I do is I select the best ones. I'm not going to use all the exposures. And then I put them in here. And then these JPEGs are from Lightroom. I put the JPEGs here, but then I move the JPEGs from that folder, the JPEG, I put them in here. Now I'm going to quickly go to Lightroom. There's a navigate to the folder selection. And suppose you're in my files, I do this. I want to sync. Just want to sync the white balance. Then you control A. Then I do this. I'm going to sync the treatment or profile, the white balance, the clarity sharpening, the color features, the noise reduction features. And I sync the image and then I export them. Export. I choose the photo location, then I change the name. And I make sure you use JPEG, and make sure you use sRGB. Image in white, height. I like to use 150 pixels per inch, 300 width, 300 height. I want to sharpen the screen. I want to manage sharpening. I want the standard. I don't want high because it's too high. Low doesn't do anything. I click remove personal info, remove personal location. Sometimes I check that, sometimes I don't. And then I click export. I'm going to get out of Lightroom. Then I'm going to go to Photoshop. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to go to Photoshop. I'm going to go, I'm going to open up. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Photoshop. Okay, here's Photoshop. I'm going to navigate to that folder. I'm going to open up first the master art file. And then what I normally do is I open up all the selected JPEGs. So I open up all these, but for sake of time, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open up one but I do open up all of them and all, and all these, these are JPEGs. This is a copied part from a JPEG masked on here. So I'm going to go to the JPEG. Actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the file. I'm going to start. I'm going to inactivate all my layers. It's a really dark image. This is called a blank exposure. Some people say go even darker. You can. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that file. I'm going to select this mug right over here.
When you use object selection, I'm going to use a rectangle. Sometimes you could use a rectangle, sometimes you use a lasso. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little finer selection. I'm going to change it to the quick selection. I'm going to use the alt key. I'm going to try to make this a little better. So I'm going to try to like perfect the selection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to paste this. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to try to make it fit on. So I got to stretch it in place. So what I want to do now I'm also going to turn this into a layer mask. And when I paint, I'm gonna make sure I start with gray. And then I'm gonna use the brush. And I'm using a very soft brush. I'm using a brush with no hardness, rounds. I'm gonna finally start, my first coat of paint is with screen mode. I'm gonna paint, I use gray in the first because it's a lot more accurate. So here, make sure it's Use, try to use gray. And then a second coat of paints. I use, I'm gonna use another like soft light. I'm gonna use like overlay. And I'm, I'm just changing the color. The second coat of paint is white with a different blend mitt other than screen. And this is how I paint. So I'm gonna throw this layer away. I am, you know, I first start with a color of gray, with a blend mode of screen. I do some painting. And then the second coat of paints, a color of white, and I use like an overlay blend mode. And this, I start with the color of gray, with the blend mode of screen. And then the second coat of paint is white with like an overlay where I sometimes use several different blend modes to get the effect I like. Again, this is a complicated subject because it's several selections. I start in color gray with the screen mode, with the blend mode of screen, then change the color to the white with a blend mode of overlay. And the same thing. So, do it to all these layers. So that's, you know, my first coat of paint is with color gray, with the blend mode of screen. Second coat of paint is white. 
with an overlay blend mode. So then I have actions. And then there's actions for dense. The width is bigger than the height. I'm going to use this. If the height is bigger than the width, then I use this because it's a bigger width. And then I use filters. I do the speckle. And then, then I do dust and scratches. Then I use sharpen. I use Unsharp Mask. And make sure, like, I look in here, I look at the subject and I make sure there are no black halos. And I use a radius of one for the pixel and a threshold layer. Let's go back to that screen. The threshold layer is seven pixels and I want to affect one pixel. And when you export, I want to do a quick export. And these are my export preferences. It's already set. JPEG, quality 100. I click, and I can set any time I like. Let me go back to bridge. Then I'm going to talk about another light painting object. These are my solo parts. I select the best ones by pushing F5. I put them in here. And these are JPEGs exported from Lightroom. We're not going to go to Lightroom because I already did that. And then I put the exported JPEGs I copied from that file to here. So everything is in one file. And then the master art file. And then these are the JPEGs, the best ones. These are JPEGs exported from Lightroom. Now I just want to quickly go to Photoshop. Not going to save any changes. I'm going to open up that other file with the crackers. I'm first going to open up the master art file first. Then, like I said, normally I open up all the JPEGs because I want to save some time. I just want to open up one. But all these um all these layers, these are all JPEGs. These are lighted parts. These are just painting and lighting improvements. This is a dark blank exposure file. I'm 
I'm going to select the crackers. I'm going to use the object selection tool. It's going to be a rectangle. I'm going to copy it. Tricky part is selecting on. This is can be tricky in light painting. And what I want to do is I want to make this, I want to make it nice and dark here. Nice and dark. I also want to turn this in. I'm going to turn this in. I'm going to push the Alt or the Option key. I'm going to push the Mask button over here. Then I'm going to start with gray. Then I'm going to start with color gray, blend mode of screen. This is only the first coat of paints. Then the second coat of paints is white. And I always like to use a contrasty blend mode of overlay, soft light, or a combination, but I don't want to use screen. And basically, this is what I do. I'm going to throw this away because I already did it. I first start light painting, color gray, blend mode screen. That's the first coat. And then the second coat is a color white, and it's like blend mode of overlay or soft light. Like I said, I change this to gray. And screen, do some painting. Then that's the first coat. Then I change the color to white. I use overlay to get more contrast. That's the second coat of paints. And as macros, we talked about those macros for this. We talked about, you know, the, if you want to enter into the IPC 200 composition, and then the width is bigger. So I use this. And we talked about, I'll do the filters again. The speckle, and I use dust and scratches. Most times I, most times I just use one, but sometimes I can use three. And then I use sharpening. Your in sharp mask, 200 to highest, but your goal is to look at this image and just see if there are any like white halos. Ah, try this. You gotta make sure you're on the background layer. What you do is you look at the image and if there are any white halos, you wanna lower your sharpening. Talk about export. Now I just want to go back to bridge.
And we're going to my still life. I want to go to And what I do is I pick out the best raw file. And then, so basically in camera raw, you can also use control R, it'll bring you to camera raw. Basically I work my way down. I start with the exposure, I work my way down. And the first thing I do, the white balance, I sink the white balance, and I just work my way down. Sharpening is 140 plus. I don't bother with the noise correction. I like to remove the chromatic operation, use chromatic corrections for these. These are two settings, good settings to use. And I like to just, this is, a great autofill for correcting distortion. Then I click done. Now I'm gonna to go to Photoshop. I'm gonna exit out of here. I do not wanna shave changes. I just wanna open up. And basically I have actions, like I can use the same set of actions. And sometimes I have to use more than one adjustment layer to get the effect I like. Basically I use the same, you know, noise reduction techniques I talked about, the sharpening. And I export it the same way, the export. And I already have it, I just have it as a quick export. I already have the settings. We talked about the settings. 100 quality, went at sRGB. Go back to bridge. And I did the same thing with the black plexi. Um, let's see. Basically, sometimes I create lighting diagrams for my, my Facebook groups. I do the raw, I do the same thing. It's basically do the settings in raw, then go to Photoshop and do, you know, a variation of settings. And um, are there any questions? And I'll give my email at the end of the presentation. These are my still life groups, my Facebook groups and photography, my still life creative group, architect design group, international fine art, 
these are my business links. And these are, if you have any questions, you can always email me at mputrillyart2016 at gmail.com. Thank you for letting me do this presentation.